So BSPWM is an automatic, otherwise known as a dynamic tiling window manager. So this means that basically it handles the layout and the node tree all by itself. But you can actually intervene in this layout. And one of the ways to do so is through a receptacle. So to understand how a receptacle works, you need to sort of understand what BSPWM is doing in the background. So behind the scenes, BSPWM stores every single node inside of a binary tree. So things like the monitors, desktops, and the windows are all stored in this binary tree. So a receptacle is any leaf node that isn't a monitor, a desktop, or doesn't contain a window node. So basically, it's an empty node. So if I go and make one to my right here, as you can see, this is still a node inside of BSPWM. This right here isn't a floating window right now. It's going to act exactly like it would in a regular tiling setting. And that's because this is just a regular node in the tree. There's just no window assigned to it. So these act very similar to the way that a regular window node would work. So if I wanted to do something like rotate around it, as you can see, that's working exactly as it would if I was instead to have something like this window right here. So if I rotate again, as you can see, it's behaving the exact same way, but this time there's actually a window in that node. So basically the big difference between a regular node that actually contains a window and a receptacle is it can't be focused on. So no matter what I do, there's no way to actually focus this. I can't even focus on it through BSPC. If I want to target it, it has to be done in a special way. And resizing can't be done directly, but you can do things like resize other nodes and that will affect the size of the receptacle. Now, the reason why you might want to make a receptacle is because you can actually go and assign a window to it. So let's go and make another window right here and then press my special binding and that's now been moved into that spot. And this can be done as many times as you want. So let's say we make another window right here or another receptacle right here and then create a new window. Let's have VIFM in it this time and then move this into that spot. So what I've effectively got now is a three pane layout. And I can also do things like say balance the windows and have an equal three pane layout, which through other means just simply wouldn't be possible inside of BSPWM. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't actually break any of the regular tiling. So if I wanted to say, make a new window here, as you can see, they keep tiling as you'd expect them to. So even though we have this weird layout, which otherwise wouldn't be possible in BSPWM, the regular functionality continues to work as you would expect it to. So the way we make a receptacle is very easy. All we do is run BSPC node-i. However, there's one problem with doing it this way. So with my binding, I can actually go and make receptacles in any direction I want. The problem with just relying on BSPC node-i is it's always going to go by your regular splitting rules. So if you have your nodes spawning in a clockwise direction, they'll always spawn there, anti-clockwise, so on and so forth. So I would really recommend if you're going to be creating receptacles, also go and combine them with another option. So there's this thing called pre-selection. I'm not going to go too deep into it for today. But the one thing we do care about is the pre-selection direction. So if instead of making the node like this, what we do is BSPC node dash dash pre-sell dash dir, and then this takes in a cardinal direction. So north, south, east, or west. So let's say we want to make the thing in the north direction, and then we pass in the dash i. What this is going to do is make the receptacle above. And if we instead, you know, did it for south, it would make it below, so on and so forth. This will just give you vastly more control over how the receptacles actually function. So let's go and have a look at how to actually target them then. So what we do, let's actually make a receptacle to my right here. What we do is run BSPC query dash capital N dash N dot leaf. And because I'm in ZSH, I have to go and escape the exclamation mark window. So basically what we're doing here is we're running a BSPC query command. And we're going to be querying for a node as it says right here. And the node selector that we're going to be using is defined by this option right here. And the selector we're specifically using is dot leaf dot not window. So if we get rid of the not window part, basically what this is going to do is return every single leaf node. But we don't want that. We just want the leaf nodes that don't actually contain a window. So if we go and try that again, this time with the not window there. As you can see, it just returns the one receptacle we have. Now, keep in mind that this command won't limit you to just the desktop you're currently on. So on my second monitor, I've gone and made a receptacle. So if we run the command again, 
as you can see, it returns both of the receptacles. So if you just want to limit it to the current desktop you're on, the way you'd go about doing that is doing something like have a desktop selector there and just say on the focus desktop. And that returns the same thing that we had before. But for the rest of this video, we're just going to be working with one receptacle at a time. So I'm not going to bother with this option, but it's there if you want to try it. So if you do use multiple receptacles at a time, you will have to decide on how to handle them. So some of the things you could do would be, say, the newest receptacle, the oldest receptacle, the closest relative in the tree, the direction that you're in, or you could even just go completely random. But you will have to decide on some way to handle them. So to insert a window into a receptacle, what we need to do is run the bspc node command. We need the ID of the window that we want to insert. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as ID, but we'll get back to this in just a moment. And then we need to pass in the dash n option, and this specifies the node that we're going to be inserting into. So in this case, what we're going to do is use command expansion and basically just put that command inside of this command here. So put that inside of brackets. And what we need to do now is find the ID of the thing we want to insert. So one way you can do this is going by whatever window you're currently focused on. So if we go and add something into here, let's go add another command expansion. So we do BSPC query dash capital N dash N, and let's just say focused. So if we go and make a receptacle now, and let's go and make another window just so you can see that something actually changes. So if we go and run this command now, as you're gonna see, that node then gets inserted into the receptacle. Obviously, you probably wanna have that inside of a key binding just so you can do it with other windows besides your terminal. Now, one thing that might be useful alongside of this is balancing the nodes because you can always go and manually resize them yourself, but sometimes that's just a little bit too much work. Like, yeah, you can do this, but sometimes you just want them all to be equal. So the way you can go about doing this is actually really simple. So if we run the BSPC node at slash, so that means at the root of the tree, dash capital B, what this is going to do is make every single node the exact same size. And this just makes it easier to work with. Now, once you put a window into a receptacle, it stops being a receptacle and can be closed like any other sort of window. But let's say you make a bunch of empty receptacles and you're not really sure how to get rid of them. You can obviously do them one by one, but there is an easier way to do so. So what we're going to do is just run this for loop right here, which I'm going to include in the comment section. Basically, what it's going to do is run over every single leaf node that doesn't have a window in it and then run BSPC node dash K on that. And that's going to kill the node. So if we run this now, all of the receptacles are gone. Now, before I end off the video, let's just go over some of the key bindings I've been working with. So if we go down to, I think the first one I have is super plus R. What this is going to do is run a script called BSP receptacle. Basically, this is the same command I showed you earlier to move a node into a receptacle. However, I've separated it out into different lines just so it's a bit easier to read. Also, we have super plus E and that's going to go and run my node balancing command. And we also have super plus I and then H, J, K, and L to specify which direction I want to spawn in. And then super plus shift plus I, and that will then get rid of all of the receptacles. I'd really recommend going and setting up key bindings for these if you want to be using them, just because it's going to make things much, much easier to do. Now, 99% of the time, dynamic tiling is great. Generally, I don't really care how my nodes actually split as long as I can see everything I want to see. But on those rare occasions when I do actually want a very specific layout, it is nice to actually have that option. Because in older versions of BSPWM, this wasn't actually here. This has been here for quite a while now, however it wasn't there from the start. So I think that's pretty much everything for this. I might do a follow-up video where I go more in depth into things like pre-selection and then doing an overall video about manual tiling inside of BSPWM, but I think that's enough for receptacles for today. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph Peter, the Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek McHale, Nate Dog Nephite, Potees, and Zilva. If you want to go and support, I work them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.